Hi, and welcome. My name is Joe Wong, and we're playing Starcom Unknown Space. Ooh, nice. So, let's see. Uh, last time we got to this uh, area, really far away. And there's plenty of uh, things we can explore. So, let's go here. But uh, these fixed guns are actually pretty cool. We can make them uh, different ones. The ones that pirates use, that actually looks like a cannons. I don't know. I like these ones. They're pretty powerful. And it's awesome that we got this uh, lines of shooting. Hey. Okay. Also, we can do it like this. Because at least it shoots in every direction. So, um, I think that we reached max, uh, almost, uh, uh, max size of our ship, almost. What are these? Like, they're one after the other. Neutronium. Not enough. What's this? Iridium. Awesome. So, let's see. Um, there might be something in there. Like, it really looks like a straight line to me. So, yeah. Awesome. There must be something else in here. Whoa. These debris are not not a coincidence. Hmm, the beryllium. But I'm not using uh, laser. Maybe if we unlock laser MP2, it will be more powerful. But I'm not sure. So, uh, to make our ship bigger, we actually need uh, a lot more. Uh, we need really many, many uh, resources. How, do, how many do I have? Not that much. We definitely need more titanium to make a bigger ship. There's a four classes, I think, of web of, uh, of a ship, and I understand that our explorer is actually not even explorer type. Hmm. 
Hmm, another one. So this all leads to this system. Hard to sort through the interference caused by the debris and dust, but I've caught some unusual gravitational waves. Unusual, unusual gravitational waves? Wait, why are you so slow? He's actually really, really slow. Oh! What's this? These black boxes have a self-generated high uh, intensity shield. Make you wonder what's in them. There's probably nothing interesting in this in impenetrable shielding when you are just in it. Of course, nothing. Ship fragment. This massive uh, cylindrical fragment, the nature of the remnant technology is difficult to comprehend, but this one at least seemed to have been designed to facilitate interaction with less advanced beings. This massive cylindrical fragment was once part of a longer superstructure. The enigmatic remnant design, catastrophic damage, and centuries of exposure to open space and radiation have erased a great deal of information. Nevertheless, some things are clear. This was once a massive habitat structure, probably capable, capable of carrying an entire civilization for extended periods of time, possible, possibly centuries. Uh, the structure was destroyed by an interior explosion of unimaginable scale. Perks. This explains these nearby asteroids. They previously formed the earth of the structure, expelled by whatever destroyed the vessel. Like other remnants, ooh, and amantine and uh, neutronium. Artifacts, the main structure is uh, impervious to salvage, but there are several high value fragments that scavengers have missed. Is there a way for us to open this thing? Hmm. 
Maybe if we collide to each other? I mean, they, there must be some kind of... Wait, what? Oh, it's this. What? There's a five of them, and I still don't know what to do with it. Okay, let's go and see the other planet. Brown Dwarf. I'm detecting some unusual radiation nearby. Keras Rack? Oh, what's this? I don't know what these are, but getting extremely unstable energy readings and now and hot warp radiation. I think we should give these things a, wi a very wide berth. What's this? Whoa! Xenia, the explosion was the result of collapse of warp flux fields. This may not be a weapon, but a kind of field capacitator. Woohoo! Another Xenium. Oh, hit us. Keras Rack. The devout rack has been torn open by an internal explosion, despite neutronium reinforced interior bulkheads. Comparing the cosmic radiation levels on uh, the inter interior versus exterior surfaces, this rack occurred within the last few days. Fragments of a personal log is, uh, is discovered from the common birth. Transportation of the vortex cores to redacted has gone slower than planned. Volunteers are enthusiastic but not limitless. Once a course has become unstable, there appears to be an absolute limit to was within sight protected code word off. This is a remnant mandate and I'm using the Keras Inquisitor to be the first to deliver. Can I destroy it? something. Oh, I missed something here. Oh, there you are. And nothing here. Oh, 
Let's go on the planet. Uh, a recent excavation has uncovered a large and until recently sealed portal to a deep shaft. Whatever was at the bottom has been removed. But scans of the surroundings rock on the floor of the pit. The changes in the rock are not like any natural process. It's like their physical jump there has been permanently warped. A real strange deformations extended out of out for thousands of meters through the bedrock. Uh, yeah, but where I need to go now? Let's go back. To this stuff. Um, I have analyzed the gravitational waves. Kepler detected near the generation ship in the brief here. And... Nothing in the data accounts for them. I think there must have been something else in the area. Something massive. Ah, okay. Perks! Why, why take you so long to understand that? Oh, there's a, actually not explored uh, planet still. So, um, this star, a dead star. Can I go closer to the dead star? This planet was inhabited by a civilization of late Iron Age level technology several millennia ago. And now vanished. This is not particularly unusual. A uh, Triton, uh, Lieutenant Triton notes is civilization often go extinct prior to teaching to reaching escape velocity. What is unusual is that uh, the civilization appeared to have literally vanished. Apart from crumbling structures, there are basically no relics or remains of whoever inhabited them. Oddly, of the items that the team does find, the majority appear to be some kind of coinage. Annals of Ice Cores shows the civilization vanished before the star's fusion cooled, although it is difficult to say whether it was years or centuries before. Okay, what about this star? Fusion has nearly completely stopped in this star. It's radiating mostly due to retained heat. The only explanation I have is that it underwent large-scale fusion in a short time by an unknown mechanism. So it doesn't hurt me to close to it? No? Oh, nice. It actually doesn't uh, attack my ship. I mean, that doesn't destroy my ship. So it means that even uh, radiation is really low. Another frozen planet and another vanished civilization. I am not at a loss to explain why two non-space faring civilizations would literally disappear because their sun went cold. This is like one of those mysterious of mysteries of ancient civilizations hollow bits. Okay, let's go to this planet. Except this doesn't have a simple explanation well known to scientists that the narrator conveniently elides. Elides. Okay, we're back. What? What do you think it may make it? So you want me to explore it even more? Yeah, it moves really slow here. So I cannot enter it. Where do you want me to go? In which direction? What is going on with this void drag readings? Oh, another star. Brown Dwarf. You tell me, guys. You're my crew. Scan shows a compact region of space ahead of high warp deformation. Advice, caution, and approach. What's this? Ah, this one.
Oh yeah, we're like... Ooh, I'm detecting the clear event horizon around the phenomenon despite strong gravitational lensing. Possibly a naked singularity. We need closer measurements. Are you sure you want to do that? That looks like a... Some really... Just a heads up, whole stress is borderline at this distance. There may be a very thin line here between studying entropy and becoming it. Yeah, it's uh, like... If the singularity space-time distortion weren't so compact, the planets in the system would be shredded to tidal by tidal forces. Even so, the team feels a sense of vertigo as their canal canalith particles eddy under its effect. They hurriedly collect, uh, collect a valuable fragment of neutronium rich debris. I'm not sure I want to go there. Okay, we're moving really slowly. Whoa! Okay. Is that enough? Okay, let's save. Okay. So what? You want me to go really close to it? Yep. Not a true naked singularity, but an immodest one. What the hell? Didn't get that one. <laughs> Not a true naked singularity, but an immodest one. There is an event horizon perpetually concealed by a time lag curvature that continuously shifts it outside our light cone. Are you just being perks or are these real words? We almost died there. Okay, that's all, apparently. With this one. But we've got a lot of research points, apparently. Nice. Singularity is curious. I'll need a little time to review the data and recalculate measurements for the re Pema Femtus mood scale. Ooh, whoa. There's a enemy there. Gerarai. Who's Gerarai? And why he's... Uh, decided to attack me. Was it the boat? Is this the name of this ships? Gerarai? There's a natural layer of ethylene not far from this planet's core. Unfortunately the lander would be crushed 
far above their depth. Ah, a blue star. Ooh, and we have a way to return back if we want to. The architecture uses an odd mix up of fallen empire, late medieval, and early industrial technologies. Some buildings that look old are made of the transformative empire material. In one structure that stands out as having recently been opened, the team finds a wall that might have been a sort of cultural time capsule. Several artifacts have been removed, but one object left behind is a partial text document. According to the oldest creation myths of our ancestors, who referred to themselves as, as Arcadians. The god chose to sacrifice in exchange for passage across the great sea to the promised, perishing the great ice when the sun was darkened, leaving their wealth behind, lifted into the spire, but their children looked back, feeling the waves that, what, that wrecked the ship. It's my belief that there is a scientific there was a small non-indigenous population. It looks like they were struggling to survive and likely gradually dwindled over several generations. Um, it is my belief that there are scientific truths hidden in these superstitions. Perhaps the truth necessary to save our civilization. Many have observed that descriptions of the portal match the nearby space-time singularity, despite it being hidden behind our celestial neighbor. I discovered compelling proof regarding the nature of the spire, which I have laid out in this supplied memory glass. There is no sign of anything that might be a memory glass. Okay. Let's activate it. And uh, let's go back, I think. To this flinger. There's no other way around. After a preliminary analysis of the singularity, I think it's unlikely to be natural. Dr. Rama might have some more insights. Oh, so you're telling me to go back to Rama. But before that, we need to finish exploration of this. I know, if we can call it system, but they're connected to each other, and they're pretty close. Yeah, moving around this thing is really difficult. Oh, nice. Burst relay. It's another burst relay station with a message fragment in its matrix. Uh, the recoverable fragment of the message translated as Arrived Rod 23, the research of the Academy. Observations provide you some useful intelligence. To kill it. We're still going here. And I still don't know how to open this once. Okay, we're here. And we can go further. It must be... Ooh, that's pretty far. And there's a couple of stars. What's that? Get it right again. Upper. So we need to fight a lot now.
Okay, that was easy. Heavy drill lasers create dense clouds of dust and smoke visible from several kilometers away. Once the team reaches a high vantage point of foot, it becomes clear that this is an open pit mining operation. This is largely automated, but there are a number of workers and guards displaying devout markings. Let's go, uh, have Sinus Lee lead a ground attack against the devout. Nice. 86. That attack catches the different defenders completely by surprise. The team uses stun projectiles to disable the guards before they can react and the, re uh, the remaining workers quickly surrender. It seems many of the workers, despite the markings on their suits, were not really given much choice when the devout took over operations and take the opportunity to flee in small craft. The threat uh, the threat cleared, the team helps themselves to the resources that have been prepared for delivery. Ooh, nice. Platinum and Nitrium. If we need even more... Firepower. Okay, so we can open that route too. That's awesome. Nothing here. Ooh, a yellow star. I mean, for a uh, cult, they have too much. Another collection of crates. Uh, too much of firepower. I mean, that's a whole army, which is destroying them one by one, but if they were, there were many of them at once, it will be the end. It almost defeated me. The wreckage of dozens of craft shows this valley was the site of a battle years ago. Okay, let's try this one right away. 67, one kilolet, nice. Oh, there's so many of them. Bye. 
You know that radiation decay shows that this is a fairly recent debris field. Days or weeks, not years. The Vault Cargo. This vessel have, uh, had few armaments and a fair amount of cargo space as well as work research areas. This ship locks have been purged, but not destructively. Some entire entries are recoverable. The vessel is in bad shape, but the life support was still functional. Lack of interior combat signs and uh, casualties suggest the crew surrendered, which seems uncharacteristic for the devout. Follow the heavy asteroid trail. I've begun extracting cores. Uh, the black eye several crew experiencing excavation started. Experiencing something. Excavation started. Within the Arcadian vault found the memory meeting point in 30 cycles. Transferring command to Acolyt Dryad while a convey artifacts to the Monad. Okay. Iridium. Several chunks. Following the successful retrieval of Archive's crystal from the Arcadian excavation, Commander Gillux directed us to a secure meeting location, where she is now meeting with the devout monad about aboard his vessel, which has been disguised as a mercenary freelancer ship, under fire from the Keras without warning. Why? Heavy damage to reactor, retransmitting acquiescence codes. I think the commander of the devout vessel was less than completely devout and traded a valuable artifact for money and extraction, leaving her second in command to deal with the fallout. So there is a debris, something was destroyed here. You know, they're so small pieces, you barely can see them. At least from that distance. Okay, so apparently we are going for Dr. Rama. Changes to this device, weapons, and armor systems.
a buy. Okay. That's apparently all. Hello. Alithia. Good to see you again in One Piece, Commander. Our system were hit by an information Hansa, Dr. Rama of Bagley alluded to you in you in her observations. Ah yes, Dr. Rama famously candid observations. I use my imagination for their specifics. It's true our further investigations into the fallen empire, specifically the heretics, have hinted they were investigating the what we call informational hazards. It actually was a hot topic in Xenoculture back when I graduated, also known as forbidden knowledge. It referred to the information that pos posed a threat in itself. Somewhere between com a computer virus and instructive, intrusive thought, it was proven that all neural networks were uh, theoretically at risk. Triton has observed that the heretics had been doing a lot of research into low or no tech data storage systems. We assume that it was to preser preserve the knowledge in the event of widespread collapse. But some of the archives you recovered suggested they were at least as concerned with data storage methods that didn't involve any computation. Apparently they were looking for ways to study forbidden knowledge without their systems becoming corrupted by it. The big gaps in their records may be partly explained by their informational hygiene as it were. The data in the crystal you analyzed doesn't appear to be the actual forbidden knowledge they were worried about. Instead it was sort of like a bad facsimile. Oh, sorry. Where is uh, Goro? I mean the other Goro. Not the one that... not this cruisers, but a small one. There he is. Hello. Researcher. Given the increased danger of our mutual enemy, the devout, we are maintaining a continual presence in this sector with the blessing of your commander, you. Uh, the devout found an artifact called the Archive Crystal, belonging to a civilization called the Arcadians. Do you know what it is? Indeed. We have been on the same trail as the devout for some time. There are Arcadians appear in many Empire stories, a people who were transported to the afterlife in their mortal form by the remnants or other gods. Depending on the account, we previously assumed they were a myth created to encourage remnant worship, until the trade guild purchased some texts that credibly substantiable substantiated their existence. Ah. Given what you have told us, if someone acquired these objects and wished to make a profit, the wise path would be to sell it to the trade guild. The guild could be trusted to keep their identity a secret and pay a good price. Oh. So you telling me that this guy could be it. Uh, ooh, let's sell to him. Some. Yeah, more gentlemen. Okay, let's go back to our base. Uh, com cargo, remnant interface, photo field projector. Huh, interesting. It would have been difficult to anticipate a devout message the Alethea intercepted was a trick, since it was transmitted on a tight beam. They might have known our location for a while and planned to attack Saliana after the explorer went through that portal. Fortunately, they were caught off guard by improvements to our fleet, as well as the Gore assistance. Otherwise, we might not have been here when you got back. The Devout have recently started direct directing a great deal more effort towards stopping the explorer. How do you want to respond? There is no point in explorer wait waiting here. If they want to wait until you're gone to attack, they can afford to wait longer than we can. The Devout are clearly afraid that you are close to doing something. I hope it's finding out how to reopen the wormhole. So keep doing what you're doing, but faster. Okay. Uh, the lab computer is analyzing some of your recent research data, so I have a minute to answer one 
non-urgent question. Um, then if there's nothing urgent, I'll get back to my work. A perk suggested you might have some insight into a singularity we encountered. I saw you your Astro Officer's report. I disagree with uh, perks were very unscientific title in Modest Singularity Exposed. But I agree that even with this universe's modified physics, no celestial body would ever collapse into this state. Based on the explorer's data, what could have collapsed into this state is the wormhole created by the Stalins. This is a low evidence hypothesis, but if the wormhole creation process failed to completely stabilize, it might have leave a deformed aperture like this, a modest singularity. Does that mean we can go through it? If my hypothesis is correct, it means that it might go somewhere, possibly another universe. But the explorer would be reduced to thermal radiation if it tried to go through it now. Okay, was there anything else? No. Lieutenant Milton? Nothing here. So, let's go for research. Do we have anything new? Wormhole, Starland situation? Nah. Nothing here. Too bad. Further decrease. Shields, natural discharge rate. Lasers. So there's no MK2 lasers, at least not not here. Fighter drones, missiles, Havoc, and fixed guns. Luna, Wayne shot. Further increase the range and speed of our fixed guns. Why not? Uh, enhanced penetrators, but before that, let's see. We unlocked yeah, everything here. Ooh. Maximal cohesion. It's plasma weapon. Okay, let's wait. Yeah, dreadnought hole now. Let's go maximal cohesion then. At least we have better plasma. Fix guns. Um. Additional fire crew. Uh, what's better? Okay, let's let's go to this one. So we now have even better. Ship, but there's nothing here. Like there's nothing I can go to. Um, wait, there is actually one place I can go. And this is... That one? Attack, please. Let's go, true trader. Um, we are interested in learning more about Imperial Flora. Okay. The gardens of the Empire were truly magnificent at their height. They developed and, cultiv and cultivated a wide range of species, both hardy and delicate. Okay. Trade with you. Archive crystal. Okay, buy it. 
Uh, what I don't need, what we can sell to it. Beam coolant, beam reflector. Aperture penetrator. Okay. What else? Data devout cruiser data bank, devout debris. Okay, I'm curious if I want to buy this brass joint and remnant scroll. Fighter power cell, yeah, why not? Fighter stabilizer, yeah, I already analyzed it. I don't think I need it. Fixed barrel. Cell. 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 It's already analyzed, so... Missile. Plasma cohesion adapter. So let's go brass joint and we need to sell something more. Shield controller. Yeah, why not? 56. And we need 54. Nice. Thanks. You have purchased data based on the engineered floor of the Fallen Empire and their gen genetics. We have purchased. Yeah, we have. We can now conduct the research necessary to modify the blight in the lab. Okay, let's go. Analyze this. Okay. That's a lot. Wait, so... Can we... Let's go back then? I've done a first analysis of the Arcadian Archive Crystal. This was a very unusual culture with a unique history. It seems a lot of their myth was scientific data mapped in onto concepts they un understood. Space is ocean, waves are warp, fields, etc. There is one particular segment that is in a completely different language, or at least... I think it's language. It's a flowing lines with intricate pattern that look fantastically uh, like warp equation, but the complete context is missing. Uh, Commander Dawson team has spent a lot of time researching the civilization of the space. She might have some better insight. Let's go and talk with her then. Dawson, are you uh, after you? La last left, I reached into Gore who shared their collective data on the Arcadians with us. The basic myth is that two peoples were chosen by the gods to cross the sea in a pair of great arcs and settle in the uh, promised land. But it was a long journey and during the, it, the children of one of the people grew tired and wished to return home. They went to the charioteer of the gods and asked him to take them back. He could not disobey his masters but he could promise to keep them safe and teach them the workings of the ship so they could understand their journey. The children used the, his research, uh, his teachings to free the captured waves that carried the ship, Things, thinking this would stop them. Instead, it tore the ship apart and the waves caused the other ship to founder, founder and become lost in storm. The Talonian called upon his chariot to save as many of the Arcadians as he could, then passed beyond the Great Ring. Okay, end of story. As uh, Triton noted and the Arcadians themselves later 
and later believed, this myth was very likely a real event that was incomprehensible to a, a pre-industrial civilization. I think the most salient point is the particular flowing lines which are described as the eye of the wheel of the chariot and eye of the storm, but we lack of the complete context to extrapolate its meaning. Whoa, almost hit you. Mission completed cre archive crystal. That's all? Really? I thought at least we would get uh, something. <sighs> and I definitely need to start protecting my ship. So we can go with this one. Uh, Dr. Rama. Oh, for now. Dylan Milton. Come door you. Nothing. So can we research something new? Imperial Blight. That's research how to genetically modify the Imperial Blight. Success. The new life form can clear the Imperial flora from the colony and release nutrients. Then they'll be able to grow their own food stocks. Okay, that's nice. Okay, okay. We have this. We researched everything here. Engines. There's so many of them still. Improved deflectors. Large bulkheads. Yeah, let's go for that one. Okay, so. Ah. We still don't have any... Oh, we have Imperial Floor. We can finish it and also we can explore this area a little bit more. So, we will finish it here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash like if you did. Leave your comments and subscribe. See you in the next videos. Bye.